there's a passage where the Buddha says one of the secrets to his gaining awakening was that he was never content with skillful qualities. A while back I received a letter from someone who asked if that was a misprint. Shouldn't the Buddha have been content with skillful qualities? After all, he talks about delighting in developing skillful qualities as one of the noble, one of the customs of the noble ones. And he talks a lot about contentment as one of the basic principles in the practice. But the passage was not a misprint. It's what the Buddha said. He's not content with skillful qualities. In other words, where he had attained this level of skillfulness, he didn't just stop there and rest on his laurels. He wanted to see if there was something better until you got to the point where there was nothing better at all than what he had found. That's when he stopped. Contentment has to do with things outside, the material requisites for our lives. A lot of the situations around us where we can't make any any positive changes, you have to learn how to content yourself with this situation for the time being at least. Particularly with material things, you have enough to get by, you have enough. And a lot of times all our extra effort that goes into making something better or better or better outside is wasting time that could be applied to the mind. And that's the area where you should focus your desires for improvement. Because as long as the mind is dependent on outside factors, it's in a position of weakness. It's open to all kinds of changes, all kinds of instability. And outside here doesn't mean just outside of you. The body itself is considered an outside factor when we're talking about the mind. We get this body in. In the beginning of life, it just keeps getting better and better and stronger and more able to do this and more able to do that. And we have this idea that just it's going to keep on improving that way. And then we hit a plateau. And then we discovered it's not able to do things that it was able to do before. And it doesn't serve notice and it doesn't explain why. These things just happen. And as time goes on, it gets worse. And you want to be able to develop the mind so that even though the body gets weaker, the mind doesn't have to get weaker along with it. This is why we need to make the mind more independent. And its skillful qualities are the things that make it independent. And many times they're just simple things, learning how to keep your mind under control, to make it think about one thing and not think about something else. This evening we had a Thai family come here. and. The daughters of this woman were concerned that as she got older she tended to focus on negative things in her life. And they kept trying to tell her, think about all the good things you've done in the past. And apparently her constant reply was, well, wouldn't that be greedy to try to make the mind better? So I had to explain to her, no, that wasn't greed. It was wise. And even though it involves desire to make the mind better, that's a good desire. The Buddha doesn't condemn all desires. The desire to be more skillful, the desire to cause less suffering, these are all commendable desires. They're part of the path. So the desire to keep on getting better and better and better in the practice is good because it makes the mind more and more independent, less likely to cause suffering for itself, and as a result, less likely to cause suffering for others. So look at the time you've got. And you realize you don't know how much time you've got. It's not the case that the oldest person here in the room is going to go first, or the one who looks healthiest right now is going to go last. These things are very uncertain. But you do know you have the time right now. What's a good investment of your time right now? The Buddha said, ask yourself, if you were to, if you were to die tonight, would you be ready to go? And 
99.9% .9 of the time the answer is no. But look what's holding you back. What mental quality comes up in the mind that you would miss or that you would latch on to? You've got to see that as work to be done. And here's your chance right now. Now the problem, of course, is that you realize that many of your attachments go very, very deep, and just one meditation session is not going to cut through the issue. But at least if you learn how to look at it from a little bit of a distance, it makes it that much easier to let go of these things when you're forced to let go. All too many people in the world have no practice with letting go at all. And when the time comes, things are just ripped from the grasp. It's like a John Lee story, the person wearing gold chains, and which they do in town. People have gold chains around the neck, gold chains in their ears. He says, these things get ripped from you. They don't just get taken away. They rip part of you as well. You've got to look in, into the mind and see to what extent are you identifying with these things, to what extent are you feeding on these things. And not and not all the cases are the really good things. There are some un injustices from our lives that we really build our identity around. And you have to ask yourself, how much do you want to do that? And see what part of the mind objects to letting go. Try to figure out who that is in the mind and why you want to side with that voice. And of course, the attachments we have to the people we really love, who really have been good to us. That's something we have to let go of as well, and that's really difficult. But it is possible. Not, you, not that you no longer love them, it's just that question of do you have to feed off of these relationships? When I first went to stay with a John Fuang, one of the comments he made that struck me the most was he said you know, that the whole purpose of the practice is to purify the mind. And for the mind to be pure, it can't be going around feeding on things all the time. You have love for others, you want that love to be pure. Okay, Look to what extent you are identifying yourself around that relationship, to what extent you need that relationship, or tell yourself you need that relationship in order to be happy. And yet part of that relationship is something that came to you in that didn't come to you with birth, for most of us. There are a couple of relationships, i.e. with our parents, that were there already. But there were times in our lives when we didn't know a lot of these people. And you were happy. And if you feel that you would be untrue to them or disloyal to them in order to, if you were decided to create a little bit more independence. That's not the case at all. In fact, the less you're feeding off a relationship, the better the relationship becomes. And the more you're able to see it with clarity. So wherever you find that there's something that's a really bad sticking point in the mind. At least for the time being, just let it go. Think about putting it down. Think about putting it down. Allow yourself to think that thought. Sometimes we won't even allow ourselves to think that thought. Allow yourself to think it. And let's see that there's a part of the mind that's still okay. Learn how to focus in on that part of the mind. Because there is a part of the mind that just watches, 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 watches all the time. And that's your safe spot. John Mahabhu tells about the time when he, John Munn passed away and he was feeling lost. Who is he going to go to now to help deal with the problems in his mind? And I thought, well, what are some of the things that John Munn said when he was alive? And one of the pieces of advice that 
kept coming over and over again was if you see the mind latching onto anything that might be dangerous, just go back to that sense of the knower inside, the part of the mind that's just aware. And whatever else is there in the mind, just let it pass, pass, pass. And no matter what, he said, as long as you stay there, you're safe. Now that's not the end of all problems, but at least it puts you in a place of safety. And you want to work toward that if you don't have it yet. If you have it yet, then you dig deeper. If you have it already, <coughs> you dig deeper. But it is something to work toward. Because it is a safe place in the mind. It does help you look at all the other issues in your life and realize that some things are not going to come to closure, or some things are going to take a long time. And that's that part of the mind that's okay with that. It gives you a place to look at the other parts of the mind that are not okay with that and not identify with them quite so strongly. Even if you can't let go totally, learn how to loosen up your attachments a bit so they don't weigh so heavily on the mind and they're not so permanently there. So even though we can't expect to deal with all our defilements in tonight's meditation session, learn to loosen things up a bit inside. Anything you see in the mind is particularly strong. What can you do to learn how to step back from that? And don't just tell yourself, well, it's got to be there, so we're just going to give up on that. Loosen it up a bit. Question it. Get the mind solidly with the breath so it has a sense of feeling okay, safe, right here in the present moment. Not threatened by things. Not threatened by the idea of letting go. And then test that. You get to know your mind really well this way and see the ways in which it's creating unnecessary stories, unnecessary things that weigh you down. Because for a lot of us, the past weighs us down heavily, the future weighs us down heavily, and it's just one little moment here in the present. How is it going to bear up with that weight? Try to see your thoughts of the past as things that are happening right now. This is a thought of the past. Don't get into the thought. Step back from it. Same with thoughts of the future. You learn to question those narratives. And if the narratives are true, then the question is, are they worth holding on to? Like that question about speech. Is it true? Yes. Okay, well the next question, is it beneficial? Well, maybe not. Or even if it is beneficial, is this the right time and place? You can learn how to cut through a lot of really heavy, heavy thoughts this way. The whole purpose is to see you don't weigh the mind down unnecessarily. If there's anything that is weighing the mind down, it is not necessary. Keep repeating that to yourself when you find that something really is getting to you. And this becomes an absolute truth for people who've been able to let go. Had a taste of the noble attainments. But for, even for people who haven't, it's good to keep that in mind as a possibility. There are too many things in life that get in the way of even letting us think of that as a possibility. We'll learn how to cut th through those. There's the part of the mind that doesn't have to suffer. Yeah, if it is suffering, it's not natural. It's unnecessary. Always keep that in the back of the mind, and it creates a lot of safety. Even if it just has the status of a possibility. It's a good possibility to keep in mind.